Okay. This is uh, this is not going to be a pitch for the live stock and fish CGAR research program. What I want to try to do is use it as a framework, I think, that pulls together some of the ideas that have been floating around the last few days. And I'll do this at a value chain level. I think Louise will then follow and step back a little bit further at a broader level. Um, but I think the value chain really addresses, uh, provides a very nice operating unit uh, for all our conceptualization and our organization of, of the type of work we do. Uh, and a number of the concerns that were raised by Johannes in his first, uh, his first presentation, a number of the things that came out over the day, I think we, we have also been anticipating the same issues. And we have tried to address them uh, in a, a process that I think could have uh, offered some, some ideas to USAID as well. Some of the things that came up over the last couple of days were it's a longer term process. It's not three year projects I mean, to get these things done, scaled up, et cetera. Uh, Johannes made in his, uh, in his uh, spaces for policy, for innovation, for different things. And how do we make sure that those are really addressed uh, as you're trying to scale up a technology? There's a lot of talk about is it just a technology? Is it, can you just, can the cow wag the dog in terms of a technology wagging the value chain? Um, or do you have to turn it around the other way and see, let the value chain identify what are the technologies that are needed? Um, he also, Johannes had M&E and learning. And I think we focus always on the M&E because we like to, to measure things. But the learning, how do we incorporate the learning into the type of project work, the type of scaling up? that you're um, trying to do. So there are a number, a number of issues. Which technology do you invest in? Uh, and so I think a number of the discussions crossed over. Uh, a number of ideas were, were floating around. And I think the, the way we attacked it pulls some of these together in an interesting way. Our, uh, again, the, the CGAR has been going through reform, and as part of this, we're now working in large-scale programs that, that bring together different CG centers to focus on a specific issue, much like Feed the Future is trying to do. Same, same spirit and the same objectives. The, um, for us, we were given the mandate, listen, in 2050, are, is there going to be enough animal source food on the plate of the poor? Everybody is focused on the grains, the cheap nutrients, but are we going to have a balanced diet, a healthy diet for the poor in 2050? Where is that food going to come from? Some of it will come from industry, but there's a huge opportunity to really empower smallholders around the world to produce that, that needed production of animal source food. So we, our tagline is more meat, milk, and fish by and for the poor. So we're focused on food security, but we're also poverty reduction, who actually produces the food. Um, and I think one of the key comes out of this is it is the value chain that is going to allow uptake of technologies. It's going to allow intensification that is going to produce the food for the future. And we embrace that wholly, and, and we actually saw that it was sort of a moment when, when we started thinking through this that, of course, you have to do the whole value chain because the main problem that especially we have faced in, in livestock and aquaculture has been that the, there, we have nice technologies, but an individual technology doesn't get taken up unless the rest of the value chain is ready for it. If you don't anticipate those bottlenecks, and those other constraints, your technology just withers and dies. So we said, yes, let's look at the whole value chain. And then in the CG, we do research. And the USAID invests in that. And we need to make sure that that's linked up now to, to impact. So how does all this basic research on vaccines, on new varieties of, of uh, 
uh, forages, um, new genetics, uh, our institutional uh, research as well. How does that get really translated into impact and in a faster mode? So we thought, like the farming systems research of the, of the 80s, 70s and 80s, we really have to work at the value chain level, identify what the, what the problems are, and gear our research to address those problems and see where the opportunities are for technology to be taken up. And that's not easy to do. We've, we've started in the last two years. We're still working on it. It's a whole mind change as to how we work um, and how it reprioritizes some of our, of our basic research. But the, the point here is the value chain. Really need to keep the focus on the value chain. And I like the way that that is coming out in the types of way that USAID is organizing its work. This is the main, the main slide. What we've tried to do, and this is a very simple, stylized, oversimplified, but I think powerful way of thinking about it, is if you have time going from year one to year eight to 12, something like that, you're envisaging transforming the value chain to make it pro-poor, to make it generate employment and income for the poor, but generate products on the plate of the poor and are not exported out, um, et cetera. That part of that is going to have to be research investment up front and assessing what the issues are in the value chain, understanding it, um, assessing what are the things people are doing already that are, that are really powerful that need to be, what are replicable elsewhere and what, what things aren't. So the top part, the yellow part, is the research side. The lower part are the development partners. Right at the beginning, working with development partners to understand what they do that succeeds and fails, and helping them to, having them help us to understand the context. And then over time, we now test their best bets. We try out the different ideas. We get evidence. We produce and generate the evidence that allows you to know where to invest, which are the right technologies that are, have shown promise and we have evidence as to what benefit they'll have, both in terms of increased productivity, but whether it really increases income in the, your target population. That evidence base then we use with our development partners to attract the development investment, your money. We come to you with a business case this has worked and here's the evidence and this is why you should do it. Jean-Michel, has his example is excellent. Good technology and now he's done the learning as part of that project as to how to apply it so that it gets to the right target. So he's done a lot of the learning. He's in the middle part of this, um, learning and applying and going to scale at the same time. So I, we see this as a way, this is an experiment We've never done this before. We've never worked with, with development partners successfully at large scale. We've done a couple of um, large projects now recently where we're learning how to work with development partners and in real time and at scale. But it's, uh, it's, a, it's a real challenge. But I see this as really pulling together all these different threads that we've all been learning over, over the last 15 years about what, how do we operate now in um, a setting where there aren't parastatos to do everything, where it's the private sector, um, we, have, we can't control extension services, uh, it's through um, private sectors as well. How do we stimulate that? How do we grow those pro for uh, value chains? And just now it's my pitch. So we're, we're pitching in only nine value chains, focusing all our research to see if we can do that. Okay, and that's where we're working. Animal source foods are really important. Invest. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.